recently just spoke to Pippa Jo Marston, who is a very dear friend of mine, but got caught up into the world of drugs, alcohol, and didn't realize that she was getting wrapped up. And after being sober for just over two years now, she shares her story and also some amazing advice, which I thought was absolutely incredible advice to help others really find their own peace, to help them find who they are. And you may find that you'll resonate with it or that somebody you know may resonate and that they just need to watch this. Pippa Jo Marsden, my dear friend, we've known each other a long time, a long time. Um, I saw a picture last night of us two in Ibiza, which must have been your wedding years and years and years ago, but um, it was quite amazing. But you have some story. I don't, I don't want to tell everybody about you. Um, let everybody know who you are and uh, just a little bit about who you are really and, and your life, where you are now. Okay. <laughs> So we, yeah, we did know each other a long, long, long time ago. I got married, um, goodness, in 2005, I think. It's uh, a long time ago. And yeah, I was a very different version of myself then, for sure, when I, when I met you. Um, but I'm Pippa, I'm a mum, I've got four children. And, um, and right here, right now, like I'm really passionate about uh, healthy living and uh, wholesome healthy living I mean from kind of mind body soul spiritual uh, and that's that's a, like that's who I am right here right now and that's it's a, it's a massive part of my life it's everything that I am but leading up to, leading me up to that point has been a very very different journey um, and definitely yeah. when I first met you I um, was in my my party girl phase I would call it and even though I was a, a young mum at that point I was still sort of stuck in that in in that phase of my life so yeah I've been I've you know I've, I've been drinking since I was 14 and um that had been a massive part of my life and um and and men mental kind of health and had been up and down from from that point really uh which which led me to really search for who I really wanted to be and, and to get connected to who I wanted to be and kind of be and be here right now where I am kind of in that in that healthy living mindset but it's been a journey for sure. It has been a journey so I mean obviously here you are you do, go Facebook live you you have been recently featured on the BBC in the UK you were featured locally as well in your local TV because you had you at the beginning of all of what's going on right now. You you um, started to sing George Michael's Faith and you completely changed the words and you had all of these people watch your, your video. And so a lot of people were obviously seeing this, this person as you are now, beautiful, gorgeous, bubbly, but it hasn't always been like that. It has no. always been like that. So take us back to obviously how long have you been sober now? Two years, just just Yay! two years, two years and a week, <laughs> or two weeks, or two weeks. I've forgotten. <laughs> that's that's fantastic. Take me back to that moment that you realised that you needed to do something back with your life, that you needed to get your life back on track. Yeah, if I'm really honest with you, I actually knew um, that I needed to make some changes, especially surrounding my drinking, 10 years before I actually took the plunge to, to do it. it, it, it ten, for, for 10 years of my life, um, I was going through a pattern of feeling like I was drinking too much. Was I an alcoholic? What does it mean to be an alcoholic? Waking up at four o'clock in the morning and justifying why I drank a bottle and a half of wine the night before. Um, and that went on and I, you know, I started thinking I'm going to make myself sick. Am I going to give myself cancer? These weird things that went on, but that, that, those things went on for 10 years. So it was actually 10 years before I stopped drinking. that I actually really truthfully knew, but I was just almost kind of trying to test myself or working out if that was actually an issue or not. So it's a long time, isn't it? Like 10 to think mm. 10 years. I don't, and I think of that now and I think, how could I have not taken the plunge before you know bef before that point why why did it take me so long to to actually to, to you know to, to kind of do it I almost I pushed myself to such extremes 
um, into such a corner. I almost backed myself into such a corner that I had really, there was no other choice. It was either live the rest of my life um, justifying to myself why I am or I am not an alcoholic or am I or aren't I, you know, yeah. <laughs> and um, just feeling really rubbish about myself, you know, that's really, it's shame and um, shame in itself. I think I talk about it as being this really heavy blanket. It's just like it weighs you down and it, and it then kind of, um, it then it comes out in very different ways in like anxiety, in anger, in, um, you know, in, in, bitterness in resentment it's a it's a not it's not a very nice thing to live with shame and I and I felt a lot of shame when I was you know in my you know in the height of my kind of uh, regular drinking phase for sure especially being a mum yeah you know because obviously I was a mum at the same time so we're, we're still both mums but you know what was interesting is I would never have seen you as an alcoholic I would never have seen you as that person and so do you think the word alcoholic has a stigma attached to it? Yeah, 100%. And I, and I, I, I don't know what, I, what my label is, um, but I have no problem if it is alcoholic. Um, I, what I do know is that my, my relationship with alcohol was unhealthy um, and, it was not a, and it was not a positive relationship. I don't know whose relationship is good with alcohol, but my mine definitely was not healthy. It's not healthy to be wondering whether you should or shouldn't be drinking that's unhealthy to have those thoughts if you're starting to think things if you're starting to think about if it's acceptable to have a drink or not um or you're having those things the thoughts of am i an alcoholic <laughs> um because i used to call myself for fun a functioning alcoholic i thought that was funny um but i now look back and think actually i i really actually was i was drinking on a regular basis i was going to work i was like you said you wouldn't have nobody would have looked at me and thought alcoholic i think people there is a stigma and people think an alcoholic is someone lying on a bench at night who's got nowhere to go and sleep and they're drinking it from a brown paper bag or drinking every day or hiding drink or drinking every morning when they wake up i mean some people are that person um but some people actually and i see a lot of a lot of people that you know in this society especially in the uk in this mummy wine culture that are actually addicted to drinking alcohol yeah and it, it is it is very true i was brought, brought up with a, an alcoholic uncle an extremely alcoholic uncle he was the guy that um would be drinking at, at nine o'clock in the morning instead of coffee he'd be drinking his foster's lager you know and then it got progressively harder liquor towards the end of the evening and it was it was really awful actually and he was my favorite uncle and what was interesting about him is i could never really understand why no one wanted to talk to him every time we went around it was like oh don't talk to him in the corner but i always wanted to and he got sober towards the end of his life and then tragically he passed away he wasn't a tragic passing you know as in a car accident he, he passed away lying on his sofa um you know from a heart attack and it could have been because of the excessive alcohol that he had but who knows it was always that stigma was attached to him and it was a really really hard thing and i i think this is what's made me be a little bit more compa have a little bit more compassion to people because there must have been a point in his life and sadly he's passed away now but there must have been a point that pushed him to the edge of taking him to that level what do you think was your level i mean what what do you think your story was that led you up why did you start drinking at the age of 14 what what put you to that um, no it's i look back now and i can honestly say it's because at school, like I've always been everyone's friend. I'm, I, I just love people so much. <laughs> I just think humans like yeah, the difference. Yeah, I do. I, I really genuinely do. Like I love, I love human beings. I, I love the fact that everyone's got a different story and they're from different backgrounds and we're all different. And I, I, I celebrate everyone's differences. I just love it. And I, and I, and I love to hear, I love to learn about people. So that I've been doing since I was, you know, a little girl and at school, I would be everyone's friend. Um, but I didn't really, I was so desperate, I was also desperate to fit in, which yeah. is weird because I was fitting in anyway, but at the time, especially like as a, as a teenager at, at senior school, like high school, um, I just, I wanted people to love me. I always, and it's, and I came from a family of love. So there's, I haven't, I don't have a trauma. 
nothing horrendous has happened to me. Um, you know, apart from my nan living with me, which might used to annoy my dad. But other than that, I had, I had, when I look back, I had an amazing childhood. It was full of love. Um, and I, I, I had lots of lovely friends and I was just, it was great. I, I have nothing that I would, would make me want to run away or had a trauma that I was trying to forget about. But when I was, uh, you know, in those teenage years, I just so desperately wanted to fit in with everyone else. Everyone had kickers, everyone had Nike shoes, and I just wanted to be that person. My parents were a bit older, um, so they didn't, there was a bit of a divide. Um, but again, I just, I, I've had that wildness in me. It's always been in me, that kind of the rebel, the wild. I was definitely the one who was pushing it to extremes with my parents. You know, I just wanted to do what I wanted to do. Um, and, um, and, and that happened sort of coincided with, with some of my peers started drinking and smoking. And so I wanted to fit in and, and, and to look cool. So I, I started to do that. And I felt like at the time it gave me confidence. I felt like um, it made me a, you know, it, it gave me like an edge or something. And, and I was, I was fitting in and yeah, like when I had a drink, I, you know, like I say, I, I felt like it made me a slightly different version of myself that potentially was more likable, but it, it just started there. And that's where it really continued, you know, like we, and again, we used to get drunk. It was about, it wasn't just having a drink. It was getting drunk. So it was never about just having one drink. It was always about getting drunk. We were like raiding my mum's, um, they had a drinks cab. I grew up in the eighties, you know, so, and then, and then obviously the nineties, I was born in the eighties. Um, but then, so my mum and dad had a drinks cabinet, you know, so I would literally mix everything. They had everything like Mirage, Taboo, whiskey, uh, you know, cognac, uh, God knows. I mean, some of that stuff probably went off in the 70s. Oh. Uh, but I was just mixing it all in the bottle, mix it around and let's go and drink it down the beach. It's awful now. <laughs> I'm like, oh. poison myself. God knows. How, honestly, when I do think about some of the situations I've been in over the years, I do wonder how I'm actually still here. <laughs> wow. But, um, but the, so... <laughs> And that's what some of my, you know, these, some of, some of, not everybody, but I thought everyone was doing it. But I do know when I speak to a lot of my people, people, people in my generation, they say similar things. They were at the park drinking. They were um, down the town drinking. They were in the back of the field drinking. We were down the beach drinking because that's where I live. So it's not, it wasn't just where I lived. It was happening as a generational thing. And I, it's, in, it's interesting to work out what, you know, was there something going on with our generation where we grew up and our parents being in a different era? I don't know. Um, but that's where it all started. And it just continued from there, like going through college and, you know, drinking. And one thing I do know, Lisa, is that I was definitely somebody who, um, who I just didn't like being on my own. I always wanted to be around other people. And so socialising and going out was one of those things. But Throughout college, I can remember times where none of my friends would be going out, but I would go to the pub. I would go to the pub and know that I'd find someone there um, that would be, that I would be able to talk to. So it was it was always an extreme. That's not normal. Even like I look back now, I think that's not normal to just go to a pub on your own as a young lady. Young girl. <laughs> I'm just gonna go on my own. I'll find someone to talk to and get drunk with. It's like I don't know. What, I don't know what what I was running away from. Um, but it, it, once I had started doing it, 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 it was, I look back now and I could say, well, yeah, I was addicted back then. Yeah, um, and you have amazing parents. You have amazing. 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 I, yeah. I love your parents. <laughs> and your parents are, they're very accepting. They, your parents are very accepting. They, yes, they are a little bit older, but they are very, very accepting and they embraced you. They embraced you as you. And I don't think they ever saw um, you have a problem, but they, but I think because they just loved you so much. So it wasn't a lot of people think, oh, there has to be some form of trauma or there has to be something. This was just peer pressure. This was, and you putting pressure on yourself and, and you trying to conform to a lifestyle that was very much of that era. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, it, and they were, you're right. They were very accepting. They, you know, when I went to, um, I went to college, uh, just as I get to college, I was, I was 16 and I, we got like fake ID, went to a local nightclub and I took my first ecstasy tablet. And then the next day I thought I was going to die because I thought I was having an anxiety. I thought I was literally dying the next day. Um, of, of, I had anxiety and now I know that now but I had never had anxiety before so um, I went and told my parents that I'd taken an E because <laughs> I, I was just like well I'm dying and I remember them taking me to the doctor and, and having to tell 
going to be so embarrassed as a 16 year old going, oh God, I took an E and, you know, but so that's what I mean. It was always like I was just trying to push it all the time. Yeah. And that's, but that's been in me that whole time that, and I would say like with my experience with alcohol has been always two things. It was the regularity of my drinking, certainly in the latter years of my drinking, yeah. um, like the, you know, how often I was drinking wine. Um, and then, but, but also when I would go out, I would push it to extreme. I mean, you saw that when I came to see you within LA, LA, I just never wanted to go home. I wanted to go, I, you know, I just wanted to push it further, push it further. And, you know, doing ease went into doing cocaine and obviously drink. Then when, whenever I'd had drink, it was like, I'd always want coke when I'd had, when I'd had a drink, if I was out, out. Um, because it was just like this, it was just this, I can only describe it as a feeling to just want it to feel, I just wanted, I don't know if they're the best out of it, but I just wanted, I just wanted more. It just, it was just never enough. There was no stopping. I wanted to close the curtains when we get in from a, you know, when the light, when the sun starts to come up the next day, we're at a house party, let's close the curtains and keep the party going. I just didn't want it to end. It was, it yeah. was just pushing it all the time. Pushing it to extremes. Yeah. So do you think that you ever had a problem with drugs as well? Oh yeah, definitely. There's been periods of my life when I've definitely been, I've been addicted to cocaine. Um, and that, but that went hand in hand with the drinking, you know, but, yeah. um, yeah. And that was like, a, those were phases of my life because that, that was kind of come and go. But again, yeah, definitely with Coke as well. Cause once I'd had one weekend on, on it or, or one night on it, I just want more the next day or, mm -hmm. um, it's a chase. It's just, ch it's chasing a high all the time. I mean, my experience with drugs is only that, that literally is probably the work. I mean, I've done I did ketamine by mistake. Um, but like that I've never done anything further than that. I know like, you know, like the hard, hard uh, drugs that are literally like, once you've had a bit, you crave yeah, it all the yes. time. Yeah, but I would say, well, yeah, but cocaine is addictive, you know, cause you, you, you have one line and you're, you're chasing that high to, for the rest of the evening. And then, you know, I'd want some the next day. So I, I know I have an addictive personality. I think lots of people do. That's yes, not that. Yeah. That's not um, abnormal. But I, I just think it's really important for people to understand that, like, I, I'm here saying to, to you that I was addicted to alcohol and I have had periods of my life where I've been addicted to drugs. Um, but you would never have known that yeah. if you, I hadn't told you that. You know, if you had spent time with me, you wouldn't have thought, oh, Pippa's addicted to alcohol. You know, you might have thought sometimes I get a bit too drunk or sometimes I'm a bit of a, uh, I don't know if I can swear, a bit of an idiot <laughs> when I'm, um, yeah, just a bit Whatever of a dick. I'm a dick anyway. Do you know what I mean? So I just think this is the thing that I realised is that actually I, I am actually a bit of a dick. But I love that part of me because I'm that's my silly, that's my fun, that's my yeah. um, that's my I don't care what I look like. That's my and, and I had that anyway. So all going right back to that, those first days of drinking, being 14. And my mum saying to me, you don't need to drink to have a good time. And me thinking, shut up, you have no idea what you're talking about. You know, <laughs> because I did. I just thought, you don't know, you're too old, you don't understand yeah, yeah, yeah. me. I love Robbie Williams, do you know what I mean? Like all these things that I thought to be true, like true at the time. Yes. But, um, but, she, but she was right. Like I, I was courageous. I, I, was, I was amazing like back then, but I, but I felt like I, I needed drinking order to be that person. And all actually it was really doing was masking the, the, like the person that I really was yeah you know that's interesting that you were chasing the high you mm. were constantly chasing the high so let me ask you what do you do to chase the high now oh I it, uh cl climb mountains run <laughs> you do <laughs> um, climb mountains and run fake yeah like fate but but also helping other people like I, I you know my my talks that I do on my social media that I'm just sharing stuff that I'm thinking or things that I've been through or stuff that I've learned from a book or whatever that I'm you know I'm sharing my journey with the world that gives me a high but but be like the charity that I'm involved in my business what what I've what I've done and, and working as well what I've done is I've, I've chosen to to put my stuff to, to put myself into and say yes to things that bring me that high and that joy and I and that like help helping someone else seeing a transformation in them seeing hearing people say to me um thank you so much you've really helped me change my life you've or you thank you so much for that talk you did on being so like thank you so much for being honest those that like that feeling 
that is just like if you could bottle that and sell it you'd be a multi-billionaire for the rest of your life that the, yeah. the highs that I get now from and for going out like I love dancing I love dancing and I thought I wouldn't be able to dance unless I had a drink and actually so but dancing is like a superpower because what it is is it's not the dancing it's the fact that you don't care what anyone else thinks that is the best high and the most freest you'll ever feel if you if you literally have this just I just don't care like I'm having a great time and this is for me so music music gives me music is I think one of the most incredible highs um that that there ever can be going to gigs be you know just I just do I do things for me and I do things that bring me joy and that that is literally my natural high yeah so did you go through AA to get to, to start your journey no, but I am aware of the steps because I, I lived with a compulsive gambler for a long time. So um, I'm aware of the steps and what they do. I just, do you know what it was? I've been, I've done a lot of, I do a lot of personal development. Yes. And in my, in my business, I'm surrounded by a lot of people who also do a lot of personal development and are very um, supportive and they're like a parachute, a safety net. So I kind of, I was doing that at the same time in those, with those 10 years of where I was kind of toying with, am I an alcoholic? What's going on? I basically drink every, I drink lots of nights out of a week, maybe sometimes four, sometimes even five. Um, and then I'd wake up at four o'clock in the morning and I would be so annoyed with myself that I drank a bottle and a half of wine last night, but then convincing myself that I actually didn't feel that bad. So it was okay. And then, um, and then saying it's okay, but we should go for a run today and balance it out. So these ridiculous thoughts that I would go through every single morning after I drank. And then by the evening, I would have justified to myself why it was perfectly acceptable for me to go and get a bottle of wine because everyone else was drinking anyway. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I was so doing what was, that. So, so what, long. Was it, what was it like when you said, okay, I'm done. I am not drinking anymore. Can yeah. you remember that moment where you said, I'm not drinking anymore and that urge to go and get a bottle of wine and you didn't yeah and do you know do you know what because someone asked me this the other day is that i i have not had an urge to go and drink or to or to go and get what i didn't have i had no urges or um or have to combat any cravings at all i just had got to the point where I was almost exhausted with the even having to think about it anymore. Right. So I was just like, I am, you know, like just literally I am done, beyond done, yeah. beyond done. There is no other option. There is no, I literally closed the back door. There was no other option other than this is, this is me and my life now. So I don't create, I don't drink non-alcoholic drinks. I don't see the point. I don't, I didn't like the taste of them anyway. Do you know what I mean? So I don't want to pretend I'm drinking alcohol. I've left that behind. Yeah. Why, why would I want to do that? I'm, I just don't drink. I don't need to pretend to drink for anyone else. I don't drink and I'm all good with that. And if that makes you feel uncomfortable, then, then maybe you should visit that with yourself. But I'm, I'm yeah, all good. Yeah. You know, and I think so. I, and also, Lisa, I pissed people off. Like I, I tested myself, but I'd also tested friendships and relationships and things as well with my drinking. Because like I say, sometimes I could be a dick. So, I, 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 you know, I'd, I'd had blackouts. Um, I had, um, you know, my, my parents were kind of worried about me. Um, I, I've had some awful things that have happened to me and I'm happy to talk about them, but th those, those things, and then, you know, just pushing friendships to extremes by the person that I was when I was drunk and then not remembering the next day and having abused people. And I was like, that's not me. Um, and it, it's kind of got to the point where I thought if I don't do anything about this now, then I'm going to lose everything. Yeah. You know, like I'm going to lose friendships that I really don't want to lose because I'm better than that. That's not who I am. So it, the, all those combinations, like a, conver a convergence of so many different aspects that just happened at that time. So when I made that decision, it was like I had sold my soul to, to something else, <laughs> you know, to the universe. And I, and, I, and I just, it's almost like you think, how many more signs do you need to, t to show you that this is not your path? How many more times are you gonna bugger up and, and, and piss people off and have to have that conversation again where you think, oh God, what did I do last night? Or what did I say? Yeah. How many more times are you gonna have that happen before, you, before it literally has an impact or does or something really dangerous happens, you know? Yeah. And it was just, so it was those convergence of things. So, so the, the decision when I made it was just, th that was it. And I've never, ever looked back in those two years or yes. wanted to drink or felt like the need to drink or, yeah, it was just, it was, it was just done. I think I've done enough drinking and enough thinking about drinking in my, I'm 38 at the moment, in my years on this planet 
I'm 39 next week. But, you know, and that really has, in, in my years on this planet, that some people probably might not do in a whole lifetime. Yeah. So it was just, you know, I've, 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 I've had my party girl crazy wild days and I am still crazy and wild, but yes, now I can do. own it. Now I can yeah. own it. <laughs> you are, and I see you on Facebook and you are, you are joking, you are laughing, you are having fun, you dance. I mean, you all through the, the pandemic, you have been really inspiring people. And I think this is what I love about you. So what was that moment when you, you've now gone into more of whether it's a spiritual life, you've gone now in more self-care. You've gone yeah. to that point. So you, you value that, that side of your life. What, it, what advice can you give to somebody who is listening to you and saying, that sounds so much like me, I don't know where to start? Yeah, it's a really good question because we, um, my friend spoke about it last night when he was talking about, um, you know, people not knowing where to start when you think, look, this sounds, I can relate to this. I've, I've been on a similar journey or I'm on yeah. a journey at the moment. But I think that's my, I think that's the thing, isn't it? Most people don't actually know where to start. They want to make a change, but like, where do you, where, where do you begin? And I, mm -hmm. it, I guess it looks different for different people. That's right. Um, but because it depends what's going on in your life at the moment, but it comes down to different factors. Cause you know, some people will say like, well, you know, all my friends drink and it's like, okay, well, <laughs> what, you know, how are your friends going to be looking after you when you, you know, when you, when you've pushed it to extremes or, or you know, are they going to be there for you paying your bills at the end, at the end of your life? No, they're not. So you have to kind of get to a point where you have to just take responsibility for yourself. Nobody else. And that hurts sometimes. I think it's being really, really looking at yourself in the mirror and being really honest with who you are at the moment. Are you the person or are you showing the world and showing up in the world as the person that you actually know that you really are? Unfortunately, with things like alcohol, they are addiction is the opposite of connection. So if you're in an addiction at the moment, then you're not connected with who you are. But if you're starting to ask your questions and that's yourself who's in here trying to tell you something, <laughs> mm. like try, trying to come out, um, and so it's just giving yourself space and time to be really, really honest with yourself, your habits, your behaviors, your lifestyle. Is that where you want to be in the next five, 10, 15 years? Is this it for life? Or do you want something more? Um, and in which case then, and it, it, because at the end of the day, the only person who's responsible for you is you. The only person that's responsible for me is me. And I could keep justifying my choices and decisions, behaviors. But at the end of the day, I was just lying to myself. I was lying to myself like every day <laughs> and so it's ha it's it's having the first thing I think is just having that real conversation with yourself as to uh, as to where you are at the moment and is are you happy you know because no one's your happiness is not anybody else's responsibility it's your responsibility so if you're not feeling happy in life in a relationship or um with a with a pattern that you're in or friendship groups that you're in then then that's you're not a tree you're not deep rooted into the ground at any point you can make a change and 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 and, and, and change something in your life but you have to be honest with yourself first so i think it starts with being mega honest with yourself and um and really th and really giving yourself a bit of time to think what you what where are you where are you going and what do you really want because i think if you want it enough and if it's important to you enough then you will find a way to, to make a change and and sometimes change comes in changing the people that you're hanging out with you know, sometimes it comes from, you know, ending a relationship. Sometimes it comes from actually um, not anything as big as that, but just kind of like thinking, okay, well, I'm just going to work on getting through each day without drinking, you know, because like in, in recovery, they will say one day at a time. And I actually think that's, that's a huge thing to say for that. My friend Monique and I were talking actually the other day. Um, she's, uh, she's been through a mental health journey. She came through our charity and we've become good friends. And she was saying that um, what she did was she was just putting it off to the next day. This is genius, this. So you know how as human beings, we kind of go, oh, God, I'll do that tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow. Yeah. And it's a really bad, it's a really bad and thing. tomorrow it? never comes. Because <laughs> it never comes, right? So I'm not in business. I'm going, don't be that person. Tomorrow never comes. You've got to be the person who does it today, does it today. Well, here's the thing. So in addiction or in, a, in, a, in something that you're trying to get out of, how about you you put it off to tomorrow <laughs> and then the next day you put it off to tomorrow again like it honestly you know when you think there's a paradox to everything in the world well here yeah. it is <laughs> here is the best one for tomorrow never comes 
if you basically just say put off your drinking until the next day and then you just keep doing that then you can <laughs> I was like, this is genius. This has got it legs. Is genius. <laughs> it is genius. So, so yeah, I think it's when you know, when people think that they're in a place and they're they're you have to be ready. First of all, you've got to be ready to admit to yourself that there is something not right, you know, and 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 it's okay to say that you've got a problem. That's the other thing I think as well. It's just like I had a problem with alcohol. I had a I had a problem, I had an addiction, I had an alcohol problem, whatever you want to call it, or however when you dress it up. It is what it is. So you have to be honest and admit that first to yourself. And then the second thing I would say is get some help. No, nobody can do this stuff on their own. If they could, they would have done it years ago. That's why AA is so, is so popular and it's still after how, I mean, obviously I know that you do a lot of work with the people who created it, AA, you know, it, it's, it's, it started and it's still going and it's, you know, you've got GA and NA and all these different derivatives on it. Why? Because it works, mm -hmm. because it helps people go step by step through this process where they're being honest and their forgiveness and they're, um, they're making peace with themselves because, you know, you can't, look back on the person that you were a week ago, 10 days ago or whenever, and, and think that that's defined you. It hasn't. It's got you to the point that you are right now. So the first thing you need, to, another thing you need to do is be grateful for, to yourself. You're here. You're still here. You know, you're breathing, you're living and you're, and you're, and you've noticed and you've become conscious that something needs to change. But if, even if that's the point that you're at at the moment, I want to say, well done. Like it makes me really emotional because it took me so long to um to actually admit that to myself and and then and i didn't give myself enough credit for the fact that i was toying those 10 years they were really important because in those 10 years i i was toying with something that was making me come i was coming up to the surface a bit more a bit more a bit more every time so be be so proud of yourself for even thinking i need to watch this or i've got to reach out to somebody or i'm going to start thinking about my my addiction or, or the fact that I may have a problem with alcohol that is just like well done because it takes so much courage to to admit something not to anyone else but to yourself so much courage you and I think like I said it's about getting help you have to you, it's so important to, I think one of the most important questions we can ask ask in life is can I can you help me please yeah. because people you know that somebody somewhere in the world has lived in has has been through something similar to you and if you have the courage to reach out to someone who's been in that situation 100 percent they only be looking down on you to pull you up and that's do you know and that that's yeah. the thing like there's and, and we live in a world of technology now where anonymously <laughs> you can get help you know if you're if you're worried about what other people are going to think and and judgment which all you always are at the beginning um, then then you just know that there there are people who've been where you've been and, and they'll understand and they'll People want to help somebody, especially when you've been through something, you want to help somebody get, get through that as well. So it's just, it's about courage. You said the magic word, which was courage, because it takes courage to overcome the fear, because that's exactly where you're in. You're in a cycle of fear of, I don't know if I can do it. And I fear my, I feel what my life will be like without it. And there's a yeah. great deal of fear and it is, it's fight the fear and do it anyway. And yeah it's realizing that there are people to help you. So let's just say that there is somebody watching this at four o'clock in the morning and they are struggling with their life. What would your advice be to them right now in this moment? Would find, find the courage to reach out to somebody. Because, if you, because often we, we, you need, you've got to, you, you need a safety net. You need a parachute, you know, and, and, and human beings in this world are, are there to do that. So I think it's just, it's finding the courage because you've got to let go of the fact that you're going to be able to do this on your own. Yeah. And actually, once, and, and, and honestly, like the, the weight that you will feel of that shame blanket that I was saying before, that everyone is addiction is, is, is wearing that shame blanket. It's like an invisible blanket because no one else can see it like in Harry Potter. <laughs> so you, you know, you've got, to, you have to, you have to, you have to, if you reach out, someone else can help you lift that shame because yeah. there will come a point and because people who are doing that, like I, when I think of all the things, the thing that you kind of, you have the shame about is the stuff that you've done, you know, like the, the things that you've done that you regret the you know, the times that I've drunk drive with my kids in the car, 
the times that I've, I've prioritized drinking over my children, the times where, you know, where um, I've, I've woken up in Guildford after coming back from London and I woke up in Guildford walking around because I'd had a blackout, like dangerous, awful situations that I would just want, wouldn't want anyone to go through. But, um, and I felt so shameful of at the time, um, you know, giving, you know, lying in bed all day when my kid and letting them watch movies and, and giving them anything they wanted all day because I was hung over, you know, horrible, horrible things that I did. But you know what? I can say that now with love because I've made peace with myself because I know that's not who I am. That was just a phase of my life. So the shame that people carry is what I think stops them from reaching out because they feel, because they feel they're going to be judged. But what I would want to say to someone in the four o'clock in the morning that's waking up and feeling like they just don't know what to do is, I, I promise you that the, the, the people who are, you know, involved in charities or support networks and things like that, there is no judgment because they've been where you've been and they felt how you felt. So, so reach out so, and just make a connection with somebody so that somebody else can, can help you because, they're, because they will be able to help. Oprah, I really want to say thank you for being <laughs> honest, being open. And I really, truly feel like your story will be able to help some people. And just the advice that you gave, you can see how passionate you are. You can see how, how it just is within you now just to help people. So thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Lisa.